Um, thank you and thanks for joining. So hopefully um, today we are discussing how to build and try good relationships within Bankless staff. So this has to do with us personally. And um, if you're going through the presentation, I've attached the link to some relevant things that we would be discussing as well. All right, so like I said, most of these were captured last week in res uh, respect to, with respect to building cross star relationships. But this time around, we are discussing how we can build um, standard intra guild relationships. So from my personal standpoint, I'd say that intra is quite different from inter. Right here now we have intra. Some people confuse intra with inter. These are two different words that are opposite, right? So intra has to do with personal, while inter has to do with a group of persons. This is a general um, overview from my own personal understanding of what inter and intra means, right? So going forward, the first things that we can we we, we need to discuss is. The guidelines, these are guidelines that should be kept in mind while we are trying to build and establish these relationships. And the first one is to source the potential relationships by um, monitoring level zero charts. Two is to cultivate relationships. Three is to gather feedbacks and iterate them. Four is to schedule group calls and five is to coordinate and facilitate. So we have a lot of time to discuss all of this. Before we dive in, do we have anyone that wants to ask a question or anyone that has anything to say before we um, dive right into what we will be discussing today? Okay, in the absence of any response, I will go forward. So the first one here is sourcing a potential relationship by monitoring levels of charts. And so talking about this, this sometimes can be the hardest part, or in most cases, the hardest part of the whole process. So it has to do with figuring out relationships, uh, places, work group, project, departments, work streams, whatever it is that you want to invest your time to. It, it brings you to that place of wondering, is this the right place for me to be? Is this where I want to be? So there is some sort of confusion. You feel you want to do this, but on the other hand, you're looking at your bandwidth and uh, you are, you're telling yourself, I may not be able to function well here. So I'm going to use myself as, as an example. Um, joining Bankless DAO, what I did uh, in the initial stage was to um, launch myself into different guild departments and projects that... That was a very big task. I, it was very overwhelming, you know, attending six, seven, eight calls in a day. A, and I, I was trying to make sure that I have enough information about these places that I choose to work um, in and the people I want to work with as well. So I had to devote time, be consistent there, um, share ideas, try my possible best to learn about the processes and how things are done there. So in most cases, this is the hardest part where you don't know where to invest your time in. So yes, you might have some set of skills that you are working with um, to some persons that are self-reserved in terms of um, what to do and knowing where to launch in. Some people don't know how to manage their time. They, they, they don't do what they do not know how to do and what they don't have time to learn. So. In some cases, people are diverse as well, where we have a lot of people in this environment. Uh, we have a different environments where we thrive in or not, you know. So the best thing to do is to match contributors to appropriate environments. Um, this can be a potential key to helping build a uh, relationship, right? So when people join uh, an organization or when, when they join a guild in this case, the first thing you want to know is what are their skill sets? What are they good at? What are the things they know how to do? Where have they worked before? Um, what are most of the things they like to do? All right. So these are some of the common questions that you bring out in the process of trying to help them figure out or build a relationship by monitoring their charts, how the, the, the place they're worth and all of that. So. I'm going to use myself as an example right now. So 
in, ca in the case of knowing where to thrive or not. For once, I've not considered myself to be an active person in terms of treasury, which is why I, even if I want to be so active in treasury departments, I, I have to take my time to master financials and accounting processes. I've not been a very good friend with that while I was um, growing up in, in, in terms of business-wise and all of that. Yeah, being a very financial accountable person is a good thing, but it's a different ball game altogether when it comes to working with organizations and people as well, because it has to do with a lot of um, questions. It has to do with a lot of transparency. It has to do with a lot of clarification. You need to tell what and where this is going and how they're going. What was your intention? Each word, you need to have a, a definition for each thing you're saying, right? So I know where I can thrive in. I know where I can do well. Uh, one of the things that helped me too, as well in, in cases of places where I do not know much about is the people there. How receptive are they? How welcoming are they? How are they uh, in terms of willing to help people out? So these are most of one of the things we have to put into consideration. I, I personally made it a bullet point so that you get the idea, right? In, uh, aside from figuring out relationships, work groups, and projects to contribute in, uh, figuring out the diverse places. The key factor here is to put um, place people in the right environment through what they know how to do and where they want to be. So I have cited an example here. When trying to build a relationship within a guild, having a contributor who doesn't care about being politically correct would not be a good placement within an environment that takes a stand for gender neutrality. So in this case, someone will ask what is gender neutrality. So um, from a general standpoint of what gender neutrality is, it's just an idea to not um, allocate duties or tasks or roles or um, positions based on sex and gender, right? In the other words, what I mean is to be equal so you don't consider giving a particular role to someone because they are male or to someone else because they are female. You know, having someone who does not um, align to the mission and the vision of Bankless DAO is not a good thing, right? It's not a good, um, it's not a good thing to have people trying to rephrase the sentence. It's not a good thing to have contributors who do not align to the mission and the vision in the team as leads or champions, despite their skill set, right? So if we have people who, um, who are good in some areas, for instance, education, and then they do not align to onboarding one billion people. So you see, you notice that the things they do in most cases are not aligned to retaining and upscaling talents that join the gear. So most times the, the act and then the right things, when you read meaning into what they write, you understand that they are in the other hand, pushing people out instead of bringing them in and helping them. Sometimes they're not receptive. Sometimes they, they don't show interest to helping people. They don't want to help people, right? So the core mission and vision, um, so a general idea of what our mission and vision is, is to help people on board into the bankless money system, which is upscaling people, helping them um, in the, any way that is possible, and then retaining talents, and of course, shipping talents into different um, sectors of the financial industry and all of that. So in this case, if we have people that don't align, it can potentially cause a brand damage to both the organization and the contributor that is trying to get involved, and the people as well that are there. So someone like me, I'll gladly walk away from an environment that does not support community building or um, community coexistence, that does not support ideas from people that are not up to, um, in the other, in just for lack of better terms, people that do not have all the qualities in the world. So because we are here to help build, make friends, and um, create potential partnerships and then um, opportunities for organizations and different places. Um, the, the good thing to put into consideration here is the fact that we have a mission and we have a vision, right? 
So if we are going to do this, we have to align. Someone like me, like I was saying, I would gladly walk away from an environment that does not, that is not biased at all. So if we're here to help people upscale and build, we would have to be receptive, we would have to be hospitable. And of course, when people join in and ask questions, we provide solutions to whatever problems they are having, right? So this is just some takeaway. Um, some potential contributors may have a lot to offer, and then they have their preferred communication systems and styles as well because of um, the different backgrounds from which we come from. We have people from different parts of the world here who uh, have their different cultures, values, their styles, their systems, their, their modes of communication and decisions as well. Most of them have different ways of understanding things. So it's good to take time and have a casual conversation with them uh, so that you can be able to put them in the right place to be, right? So you don't mix people up. You don't mix people that do not understand themselves together. So you just bring in someone that does not understand English, maybe from China, uh, from whatever country, or from, uh, okay, for instance, someone from uh, um, inside part of Africa who understands only Swahili, and then bringing them to a, a space where um, only English is communicated or only China is communicated. So it doesn't make sense. You have to study people, know their time zone, know what works for them, and then put them where they are meant to be. So that's some of the takeaways. Uh, the second one here, remember we said we have five things to have in mind, five key points to bear in mind while we're trying to build value, while we're trying to build relationships, while we're trying to build partnerships. Five things that serve as guidelines. The second one is cultivating relationships. So like I said in the last um, section, cultivating relationships, nobody really cares about how much you know until you don't know about how much you care. So what this sentence means, so we're kind of, currently going to make this into a topic of its own where we discuss largely on the issue of nobody caring about what you know how to do until you don't know how much you care. So in the case of care, how do we know that you care? Now, we have Bex, Buluatife, Diwan, Makiu, Simpliana joining the call right now. Maybe the time is not comfortable for them. Maybe they are in an environment where they cannot unmute the microphone. Maybe they are in an environment that does not support um, uh, the, the that does not support the time frame or uh, uh, that does not give them the proper attention in terms of uh, silence. Let me rephrase that. Maybe they are in a noisy environment where they cannot be able to hear or understand everything. But for the fact that we all have showed up here, it shows care and concern. So if you say, I want to do this, and then you are not showing up, how do we know that you really want to do this? You have to show up, you have to be consistent, you have to show interest, you have to show what you can do. That is when we know that you really care, and that is when we begin to build some sort of relationship within a guild or a project or a department or an organization. This is applicable in real life as well. While we practice it in the Web3 space, we practice it as well in the Web2 space. So most of these things come from a standpoint of experience. So we are here to make friends and then have fun while we learn and strive to accomplish the bankless mission. So most of times, these are things that we, we um, in the mind, we don't really take them to heart. We neglect most of these points that aside from, aside from uh, making a living out of whatever it is that you can earn in the space while you're working, which might be a core reason for some people joining the organizations that are presently in uh, the, the, the fight for survival. Aside from that, we're here to build a community, right? We're here to make friends. We're here to um, spend time with people of different locality, different culture, different religion. 
people of different um, ideas in in, uh, in totality, right? So one of the things to do in cultivating a relationship is to check in periodically to see how people are faring, right? When people join in, it's not meant to be left alone for the talent coordinators because they are paid for it. Um, at some point, someone helped you when you joined the, the DAO. So it's advisable that you reach out to people sometimes when you don't see them. I personally do it. I have some set of people that I regularly check up on to make sure, hey, how are you doing? I've not seen you in a couple of meetings. I've not seen you communicate asynchronous. Um, is everything okay? What's the problem? Is there a way I can be of help? Sometimes people are passing through a lot of challenges that you might not know. Like we said before, real life happened. So aside from being in the space to make friends and have fun, sometimes real life happens to people and you realize that none of them are active anymore. So I just made a tweet right now, um, some minutes ago, and said, I feel the crypto space is cool at the moment. I don't know what the problem is, but I feel both the DAO space, I've been monitoring how many persons have joined calls today uh, across different voice channels, and I see a load um, turn up in numbers. Unlike what it used to be by now, right? Everywhere is always hot. People are always working. People are always doing this. Sometimes it's good to reach out to people, whether you're in good terms with them or not. Hey, bro, I've not seen you here. Hope everything is fine. Sometimes ping people that you've helped on board and know their process and their, their progress. What have they been able to do? Have they been able to earn some um, membership tier? Have they been able to uh, do some certain tasks? I'm telling you that sometimes you don't know that you are giving people hope. And it's something that we should all practice, which is as well applicable in um, real life as well. The third point here is to gather feedback and then iterate. So feedback is the lifeblood of innovation. Without it, you're just trading water or water dinosaurs, right? So it's just a, a best statement from Ernst. And what this sentence means in the other hand is this. So when I say reach out to people, know how they are feeling, know how you can be of assistance to them, know where they are stuck, know where you can provide solutions for them. This is what I mean. Get feedbacks from them. So for instance, some time ago, after onboarding someone into um, Writer's Guild, I noticed that they had submitted um, an outline of what they want to write. And then I've not seen them in a couple of meetings, weekly sync, uh, newsletter meetings, and EPA. I've, I'm always active. I'm always making sure to see who is here and what they're doing. So if someone is not working, on the other hand, I know, right? And I noticed that they've not been active. So I, I went to the idea, hey, what's good? Um, I, I saw you dropped an outline of the topic you want to write. I've, I, I saw you dropped an article, as the case may be. What's the progress? Um, have the EPA staff editors been able to go through them in terms of editing? Have they been able to publish your article? Have you earned your first bank? You know, ask questions of concern. I ended up being in a call with that fellow for four hours, right? For four hours, we were able to talk things through. And then I noticed that they were facing some sort of um, slack down in terms of hope, right? The articles were not reviewed. They had submitted and EPA had told them what to do. They've not been here for a long time. Unlike me, if you give me some sort of correction and I know I can't do it, I'll tell you straight up. I am, I don't think my bandwidth will permit me to do it, so I'm going to drop it. But in their case, they just went blank. You know, no one saw them. That's how people on board. And then they, they drop out immediately because there, there's no one that's checking up on them. No one is asking their progress. And sometimes they feel no one really cares. So one of the ways to go through this is to get feedback from people. What are we doing that you feel we should do better? What are we doing that does not please you? As long as um, it's good to make friends and enemies as well, it's good to be in good terms with everyone from different localities, from different um, different biological, uh, what, what, what I mean to say is cultural background, from different cultural background, right? Because sometimes, uh, relationships spring 
out from organizations that are like this that could be a solution to a real-time problem or a lifetime, something that can last for a lifetime. Life happens and that's just how it is. So when you've gotten this feedback, just take note of them, you know, and then try to bring people in, discuss them, think them through, see how you can improve them, you know, keep evaluating processes. I'm a big fan of evaluation, right? So what I, I check myself up on a regular basis. I check the things in my hands on a regular basis. And I make sure that those things are working for sure. I make sure that all those things are working fine, right? So if there are places that there is some sort of back down, what I do is I, I put more pressure and I, I make sure to do better in those places, right? So if you keep doing this, you, you understand um, how far you've gone and the progress that you make while you are on this. Now, that brings us to the fourth one, which is um, scheduling group calls. Just an FYI, at the end of this section, we're gonna be taking questions from the top to the bottom. Every one of us, except you are in an environment where you can't speak, so you can actually type in what you've gotten, the idea you've gotten. It doesn't need, necessarily need to be a one and bigger statement. You can go with just a few line of sentences and as little as it can be, what you learned, how you want to put them into practice, anything can be very helpful. That is the feedback you're talking about. So if there are places that we need to make corrections and we have a feedback form, in cases like this, always try to provide the feedback. If there are processes that does not suit you, try to give feedback, but maybe not an offending way, because of the cultural backgrounds of people, how they read their styles of reading, how they understand the systems they operate in, right? So in this case, like I, I cited an example, while I um, tried to reach, reach, uh, reach out to people that I, I helped on board some time ago, and I was able to schedule a group call with them. In most cases, it, uh, it, it's a group call. In most cases, it's a single call. So we are appropriate to see about scheduling collaborative calls. You know, the intentions of this cause is to get uh, to know each other very well and then find out areas where you can be of help to them, uh, areas where you can be of um, strength to them as well. Areas where you guys can come together and increase your collaboration and then momentum of work. And then every single thing that has to do with um, productivity. So if you sync with people on call, you know how to do things perfectly, how to not offend people. I don't know, but for some reason, I'm a big fan of not wanting to offend people, but it's something that you cannot really do, right? So you can, you always offend people whether you like it or not. But I'm always a big fan of trying my best to not offend anyone, whether in good time or in bad, except the person wants you know, <laughs> so if, if they want, and then that's, that's, the, that's where we give them what they want. So you basically respond with what people want, right? But in this case, when you schedule group calls with them, it brings you to a point of realizing people's intentions. Sometimes people are not what they voice. So um, all thanks to emojis, sometimes People type things without emojis and you get the wrong impressions. Something of this sort happened yesterday between me and a contributor in one of the work groups where I uh, actively contribute in, right? So I, I believe they misunderstood the right thing. Maybe because there, were no, there was no emoji or something. So in cases... Maybe not on a regular basis, but if you sing with people regularly, they will know the type of people you are. I strongly believe that uh, there are people in the DAO that even if I say something wrong, mistakenly in a test somewhere, they won't take it for a wrong because they've known me, right? We've sing together, we've talked before, right? We've been able to share ideas, we've been able to work on projects. They know the type of person you are. And this is applicable in real life as well, you know? This is one of the ways that we can 
get going with uh, building intra guild relationships, and then in a very high level. So as um, is not a new thing as uh, anymore because we we witnessed a lot of um, we witnessed a lot of turn up in terms of our relationships, organizational wise, and then different ways as well. You know, holding community calls, holding um, guild things, holding different types of work session calls have been very helpful and have been a great catalyst to helping find more opportunities um, from different organizations and from different people. Sometimes people forget things. So when you sync with them and you share, so in the process of um, working on, or in the other hand, repurposing the community call slide yesterday, I was working with one of our core contributors in the CC work stream. I realized that they're Africans as well, but they have the, 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 the American accent, right? So these are some of the things that you realize when you sync with people, maybe in the process of working or in the process of um, sharing ideas together or asynchronous discussions or governance processes, or even in the just giving random updates. So general, whatever, blah, 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 we are trying to discuss is let us build a strong intra relationship that can bring about more opportunities, that can bring about solutions to problems that we currently have in the whole world. So we cannot create solutions to problems if you don't have the solution to your own problem. You need to solve your own problem of maybe trust, the problem of, um, of uh, anti-socialization. So some people are not a uh, big fan of socialization. Maybe um. Just maybe I have a little bit of those threats in me. I'm not a, a big fan of um, open wide um, accepting people just the way they are. So I, I take my time to study you because I wouldn't want you to just come in and then tarnish the little reputation I've been able to build over a long period of time. So these are some of the things you should put into consideration as well. When you're trying to build things with people, take a look at them, which is why we, we suggested that you take a casual call with them, right? In the in one of these slides, we suggested that you take a casual call with them where you can be able to study what they're doing. So in the takeaway, in the takeaway part of this slide, you can see we say, take your time, have a casual conversation with people, uh, with the potential contributors to find the appropriate team project where you can sync them up or introduce them to. So in the process of trying to have a conversation with them, you will understand how they talk, how they, whether there are people that, Okay, let me bring it up now, right? So an example is just yesterday as well, I realized that some people don't take corrections. They are incorrigible, right? They, they make mistakes and you throw up an, a mad suggestion on something that open arms, they should accept it. But you, you realize that they wouldn't take it because it's not their type of people. These are some of the threats that we all need to work on before we can be able to work on them with people. Talking about intra guild relationships, we now bring it to intrapersonal, where we begin to talk about the, some of the threats, uh, the belief systems, and that's where you begin to know how you can adjust yourself to suit what people are doing. You can start adjusting yourself to build more things that can be accommodating for people of different belief systems as well. Um, I just want to believe that I'm not speaking to myself and um, making sense. So um, if you're here and you can hear me, so you, you don't you don't really have to unmute yourself. You can just um, pop an emoji in the chat box or drop any type of message. So I'll make sure all of us are following. It's um, super helpful for me. I'm trying to get feedbacks. That is some sort of encouragement to get going with what we are discussing today. So one of the powerful demonstration of talents and community building at Bankless DAO is uh, that uh, brings major value add to welcoming communities as well is scheduling group calls. So if you're scheduling group calls, just have it in your mind that it is a powerful demonstration of talent um, retainment and upscaling as well. It's a powerful tool to community building uh, it's a major value add in terms of welcoming new communities and organizations and bringing in partnerships in the DAO in general. 
So we we'll move over to this. The next slide we have um, through helping other organizations achieve what you want to achieve in terms of partnership, through helping other communities build some sort of bond with the community we have here in Bankleston. We are indirectly furthering our mission of onboarding 1 billion people into crypto. So it affects us in, in all sides. And uh, so where we have people that step in and they believe in what we are doing, they, they get aligned with our mission and vision. And we, we are helping them with whatever problem they came with. We are providing a solution for them. Maybe with the products we have in the DAO, you notice that people are being sensitized with information that, in the other hand, brings about the further, um, further productivity in terms of onboarding 1 billion people. We become productive in this mission and vision, right? It, it, it starts bring, yielding the foods that it needs to bring. Start bringing increase in terms of numbers of people that are now sensitized with the idea of the bankless um, bankless ecosystem. So another thing to have put into consideration is while you're trying to schedule a call is to know that some people prefer to work asynchronous more than anything. And that's, it's no, it's not a bad idea. It's as cool as whatever it can be, but we are developing systems to make it easier. It's just a work in progress. Uh, however, some uh, community management calls may or may not be required in the future. So something to be discussed. But one thing I know for sure, even while we are working in um, up in an upgrade on the, in terms of calls and meetings and all of that, is that you cannot really um, align you cannot automatically remove the impact of scheduling physical calls. So if we have everyone unmuted here, they have to speak their minds and everyone hears the words of their mouth. So in that case, you, you, you notice whether they are speaking from a standpoint of happiness or in the standpoint of annoyance. Sometimes people type with annoyance and then put a laughing emoji and you laugh about it, but you don't know that they are annoyed. Right. So when they speak, that's where you can know what. In general, I believe all of these things help us in building relationships. Since we are discussing about building relationships, guild wise, these are things that help. And in the other hand, brings about a lot of things as well in terms of productivity for the DAO. Right. So uh, moving over to the next point, the fifth and the final one which is coordinating and facilitating. So let's go over this again. These are guidelines that you should keep in mind when you are trying to establish an intra relationship. The first one is sourcing a potential a relationship by um, monitoring level zero chats, cultivating relationships, gathering feedback and iterating on them, um, scheduling group calls, and then coordinating and facilitating. For some reason, I would say this is one of the highest part. This is where you become part of the vision. So there is a big difference in alignment and in being part. So you can believe, it's okay to believe and then align with it, but are you really a doer of it? So when we, when we say, are you, a big time practitioner of what the, we, we are doing here. Are you moving in the other, in the same way with us? So when you go to um, other communities, other protocols, other DAOs, how do you represent? Do you represent Bankless DAO? Even in the DAO here, do you represent Bankless DAO? So some people in the DAO are not even proud of being in the DAO. Some people in the DAO, uh, sometimes they call themselves DAO diplomats. They call themselves people that come from other organizations. In that case, they've not come to this fifth level, which is the coordinating and facilitating. Despite the fact that they may be doing this in practice, uh, in real time, but in the mind, they might not have the vision and the mission um, 
embedded on the mine. They might not be running with the same thing here. So as Bankless DAO continues to evolve and grow, there will be major need for facilitators, people that can hold calls, people that can hold sections, people that can go uh, a long way to building relationships call-wise. People that can be affluent with other contributors that join in a voice section. People that can represent the DAO in some Twitter space, in, in different organizations as the case may be, right? So the need will be there. So coordinating projects between guilds, coordinating work streams within guilds, the members, and then organizations that come from the outside is a lot of work for one person and one guild as well. It's a lot of work, which is why just um, an imagination. If everyone on this call is a good coordinator and facilitator, Everyone here, we won't, we won't take as much as an hour to discuss a few bullet points um, or an agenda of topic. We won't take long because as, as I'm explaining it to Bex, Bex will be understanding it, Boluatife will be understanding it, Maki will be understanding it, Polito will be understanding it, and Simply Anna will be understanding it. So there won't be so much room for explanations and clarifications. Sometimes we take long on decisions because the people or the parties that are involved in the decision making do not totally sync, or most of them do not totally have the coordination and the facilitation skills. So sometimes people come and they drag other people because they have not realized what coordination is all about. Sometimes you need to just coordinate yourself. So you see matters and then you don't want to get involved with them, you just go your way. Sometimes matters and issues prolong because not everyone has this, the same sense of humor and not everyone has the same cultural background and belief system. Some people believe things the other way around and then that is where we, this topic falls in. Understanding how these people behave, understanding behaviors and all those things. So most of the things we're going to be covering in the space of these sections for this season is understanding behaviors and how to most of these things we've learned them, but we, we didn't learn them under the Web3 ecosystem. So sometimes we feel it's not needed in the Web3 ecosystem. But in the other hand, I feel like it's needed heavy. So that is one of the ways to mark a lot of progress in activities, a lot of progress in how things are done here in the space. So just imagine, uh, uh, Okay, let's say each guild could have a coordinator which coordinates between the guild and the larger organization. So inside one guild, we have we currently have this uh, as an op operating procedure in different guild departments on projects where we have this work stream lead, we have this work stream lead, we have this work stream lead. But it's keen for everyone to understand coordination and facilitation. So. In, in some guild departments and projects, you notice that when the guild coordinators are not available or they were going to AFK, you notice that the operations there are minimized. Not so much are done because they are not present. Sometimes a lot of us believe they are being paid for it, so they need to be there. Whether real life happens to them, whether they die, whether they leave, they need to be there. But if we all understand coordination and facilitation, and we understand the mission and the vision, we believe and then align with them in terms of coordination and facilitation. When they are not available, you can take it off from where it stops, right? So most of these things are reasons for um, apprenticeship programs where we ensure continuity, where we ensure that things continue even why the people that started them are no more, right? Um, so in this case, the function of the relationships guild would just be to keep the guild outside organization alive, information transparent, and the projects that are flowing smoothly. This right here will be the function of the relationships. So the context of this slide is based on the relationships and not focused on any other guild as the case may be which is why you are seeing this as a function of the relationships good would be 
to keep the guild and the outside organization aligned. But then we now have a coordinator which looks into affairs in the guild. In the other day, in the in the other hand, we can say a, a cross guild or a cross dark collaborator. We have people like that. These are structures that have been built over time here in Bankless DAO and here in the relationship as well. So the objective of that is not to assert dominion by any means, it's not to um, put anybody in the place of uh, being the champion or the leader or <laughs> being the boss, right? So the objective is to take pressure out from guilds and help champions to be more productive with less distractions from monitoring communications and addressing concerns in the guild and project, right? So mm, in this regard now, the, the intention of this um, coordination and facilitation, the intention of having people as sole proprietors of a particular uh, organization or serve as a cross-guild collaborator in this regard is to take work pressure out of the guild or the champions in the guild. So if you have someone that serves as an external, external and internal body, they go out to make the relationships, they come back and all of that. This is what the relationship does for Bankless DAO. So Bankless DAO does not really have to go out to other organizations and communities to establish some sort of partnerships or relationships. That is what the relationships is meant. So from the relationships, that's where we go out and that's where we seek for potential clients. That's where we seek um, for potential opportunities to be a part of whatever it is at all. This is a very vast topic. So aside from what we have in the slide, these, uh, these five things we have in the slide, the five guidelines we have does not totally cover everything with, in, in, with regards to building intra guild relationships, uh, building inter intrapersonal relationships. It does not cover every single thing, right? It is a general overview. On the other hand, you can say five most important things, but this is a guideline. With these five things, you, you will be able to unlock the other things that can be done potentially in Bankless DAO and then in the Guild as well. So we have 11 more minutes, I, I believe before the end of this section. So right now, I'm just going to open the floor for any question and then any suggestion, uh, anyone has anything to add, wherever it is you're, you're, you don't totally understand, um, feel free to unmute yourself and say something. Uh, Text by that, we're gonna go around as well.